In March of 1967, the same month that Charles Manson was released from prison, a beautiful 24-year-old actress named Sharon Tate began filming her fourth film, Valley Hello? of the Dolls. Yes, I'll accept the call. Hello, Mother? Tate had small roles in television shows like Mr. Ed and the Beverly Hillbillies before starting her film career with 1966's Eye of the Devil. You're mad. She was a so-so actress. I mean, she wasn't anything particularly special. She was stunningly beautiful. Sharon was aware of the fact that she was extremely beautiful, but she didn't act as if she had an edge on anybody because of that physical beauty. She was just a regular person, and that made her even more attractive, if that's possible. While filming Eye of the Devil, Sharon met and began dating 33-year-old Polish film director Roman Polanski. Polanski was known for his dark and sinister films, Knife in the Water and Repulsion. The repulsion with Catherine Deneuve, and that made him sort of an international superstar, the sort of next big it director. And there was a lot of buzz about Roman at the time he met Sharon. Sharon had remained friendly with her former boyfriend, Hollywood celebrity hairstylist Jay Sebring. Before I entered the hair business 14 years ago, I made up my mind that I was going to do all that I could to elevate the profession. I'm absolutely positive that Sharon was Jay's one true love. Once Sharon met Roman, that was it. There would never be another chance. Sharon and Roman married in London in January of 1968. I think they were absolutely a fabulous match. Roman is a very interesting person. He's one of the most brilliant people I have ever known. Roman and Sharon settled in Los Angeles, where Polanski continued work on his next film, Rosemary's Baby, written for the screen and directed by Roman Polanski. Released in June of 1968, Rosemary's Baby was a critical and financial success. And really catapulted Roman to sort of the, the top of ranks of directors around the world. And at that time, you know, being married to Sharon, they, they sort of became this very glamorous, very mod couple. They were very, very charming, very emblematic of the new Hollywood. Both Roman uh, Polanski and Sharon, they were completely in love with the new wave, this whole face of Hollywood with the stars and the kind of movies they were making. Well, hi, I'm sorry I didn't see you come in. I'm Hugh Hefner, your host. How do you feel about uh, uh, doing nude scenes in a film? Well, I, I, I feel that if it's a real scene and it's an honest scene, and if it's something where you're stripped naked that you would be doing naturally, you know, making love, which is natural, taking a bath, that, that's lovely. Gosh, she was so cute. <laughs> While Tate and Polanski were living the high life in Hollywood, Beach Boy Dennis Wilson decided to flee his home at 14400 Sunset Boulevard to get away from the Manson family. He said, Greg, I'm going on the road. Beach Boys were going out. And he says, can you get me out of here? You know, move me. So I found another house down at the beach and literally moved, moved out. That was the only way to get rid of the, the family. After the family left Wilson's residence, they moved to Spawn Ranch. Located about 30 miles north of Beverly Hills in Chatsworth, California, Spawn's movie ranch was owned by 80-year-old George Spawn. The nearly blind Spawn let the family live there in exchange for help with his rundown ranch. Used as a Western movie set in the 40s and 50s, he was a far cry from Sunset Boulevard. It was dusty and dirty, and there was, I mean, it, it definitely lacked the amenities. Greg Jacobson used to visit Charlie Tex and the girls out at Spawn Ranch. For the 20 or so members of the family, the mood was getting darker. One time, Charlie, he was fooling around with a gun, and he pointed it at me. He said, well, what would you do if I pulled the trigger? And I just looked at him and said, Charlie, I guess I'd be dead. And, and that was the end of it, because if you weren't afraid, then Charlie lost the handle. But if I said, ooh, put that down, then Charlie would love it. Then he would continue on with the, with the skit. It was always a skit with Charlie. Despite no longer living together, Dennis Wilson was still trying to get Manson a record deal. He persuaded a friend, record producer Terry Melcher, 
who worked with bands like the Birds and Paul Revere and the Raiders, to audition Manson. Melcher, the son of actress Doris Day, lived with his girlfriend, Candace Bergen, in a house they rented in Benedict Canyon, 10,050 Cielo Drive. I don't think Terry found Charlie especially interesting, musically speaking, but he certainly found his lifestyle interesting, and the girls, and the bus, and the, and the, and the ranch. Greg Jacobson will never forget the night he, Melcher, and Wilson accompanied Manson to the Whiskey A Go-Go on Sunset Boulevard. You know, it was 40 years ago, same booth here at the Whiskey. Charlie kind of slipped away from the booth without any of us knowing. And the next thing we knew, there was something happening on the dance floor. And it was Charlie by himself in the middle of the floor. And people were literally moving back, clearing the dance floor for Charlie. It was as if electricity were coming out of his hair, out of his head and uh, people were just dumbstruck. It was quite a spectacle. Dennis Wilson helped to arrange some recording now. sessions for Manson. One of the songs recorded was this tune, Cease to Exist. Cease to exist Just come and say you love me This is the Beach Boys version. Cease to exist Dennis changed the phrase, cease to exist, to cease to resist, when he and the Beach Boys recorded the song in September of 1968, now called Never Learn Not to Love. Although credited to Dennis Wilson, Manson still got paid when the song was included on the Beach Boys' 1969 album, 2020. But the lyric change infuriated him. He was livid. I don't want to have my name on it. You guys ruined it. I think Dennis became fearful of Manson after he saw that side where, 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 where Manson really got angry about the changing of the lyrics, never learn not to love. I mean, there was a whole new side. There was, you didn't see the peace, love, and tie-dye thing anymore. He was an angry young man.